This week, we welcome Marcus Carey, CEO and founder of ThreatCare. He's going to talk about the Tribe of Hackers, a collection of industry, career, and personal insights from 70 cybersecurity professionals. In the security news, a WordPress plugin, how about that, is removed after I had a zero day, because that never happens. How you should charge, uh, change your Facebook password, like right now, not how, but yeah. why you should. Uh, threat hunting tips to improve security operations, hacked tornado sirens taken offline ahead of a major storm, and how a white hat hacker found a new bug class in Windows. In the final segment, we're going with a pre-recorded technical demo from, from me, but using our sponsors tool, uh, Domain Tools. It's all about domain investigations with Domain Tools Iris, and some security onion thrown in there for good measure. All that and more on this episode of Paul's Security Weekly. This is Security Weekly, for security professionals, by security professionals. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where exploits run wild, packets aren't the only things getting sniffed, and the cocktails flow steady, it's Paul's Security Weekly. NetSparker, the developers of desktop and cloud-based web application security scanners that enable you to automatically identify vulnerabilities in your web applications and web services. NetSparker scanners employ a unique and dead accurate vulnerability scanning engine that automatically verifies vulnerabilities with their proof of concept. For more information, visit them on the web at netsparker.com or email at contact at netsparker.com. Organizations internal networks are overly permissive and can't distinguish trusted from untrusted applications. Attackers abuse this condition to move lateral through networks bypassing address-based controls to spread malware. Edgewise abstracts security policies away from traditional network controls that rely on IP addresses, ports, and protocols, and instead ties controls directly to applications. Edgewise allows organizations to analyze the network attack surface and segment workloads based on the software and how it's communicated. Edgewise monitors applications and protects data paths using zero-trust segmentation. Visit edgewise.net forward slash security weekly to get your free month of visibility. Some restrictions apply. Are you an enterprise dissatisfied with overpriced analytics software that can't keep up with modern data? If so, then GraphWell is the solution for you. GraphWell is an unstructured data analytics platform for enterprises who demand total data visibility across their network. GraphWell lets your security team go beyond the SIM and fuse data sources to correlate and answer questions you didn't know needed to be asked. Go to graphwell.io forward slash security weekly for an unlimited data trial and gain uncompromising visibility today. And welcome to the show. But first, let me introduce you to a man who's a confirmed expert in SOC operations, Mr. Paul Sidorian. Welcome to Paul Security Weekly. This is episode 598 being recorded on March 21st, 2019 in G-Unit Studios, of course, here in Rhode Island. To my left, Mr. Larry Pesce. Yes. What's up, Same. dude? <sighs> We're drinking some beers. Yes. That's a change for... It is. It's good. It's good. I think because last week we drank way too much whiskey. Oh, man. And then I went home and drank way too much more whiskey. Mm. <laughs> it's like once yeah. you get going. Yeah. Mm. It's hard It's 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 hard not to do. Right. So, yeah. Right. Uh, well, good to have you here this evening, Larry. Yes. On the lines remotely, Mr. Jeff Mann is here. Welcome, Jeff. Hey, good to be here. I am uh, uh, broadcasting from not my usual place. I happen to be at the uh, world headquarters of Scythe. Nice. which is Bryson Bort's home office. And uh, he was gracious enough to let me come early. He does a, 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 a dinner, you know, for people in the area about once a month or so and finally invited me. Uh, and then I realized that, uh, you know, it was the same night as Security Weekly and I asked him if it would be all right if I could uh, broadcast. And, and he was gracious enough to let me use his office. So thanks, Bryson. He's going to make Syed. an appearance, isn't he? I hope he does. Uh, w w that could be arranged. He should crash the party, absolutely. Yeah. With shenanigans. <laughs> With shenanigans, yes. Lee Neely is here. What's up, Lee? Hey, how's everybody doing? We're over in Idaho, and it's beautiful out here. Uh, been looking forward to broadcast all day. Definitely got me through some crazy, silly meetings. Mm. <laughs> meetings. You guys wore red today. So we did. Nice. Yeah, we didn't, didn't even, get the we memo. didn't even coordinate. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Three minds Co think alike. Quick couple of announcements. We just released our 2019 Security Weekly 25 Index Survey. That means, because <clears throat> you're probably wondering what that means, 
is that we're tracking 25 security companies that are traded publicly. We want you, the listener, to anonymously tell us uh, about those uh, particular products and vendors. Tell us if you're using them, if you're not using them. Any data you can give us about those uh, 25 in the survey will help us. I don't care who you are. I don't even want your email address. If it, it is collecting the form, I'm not storing it because of GDPR anyway. So uh, what will happen is, though, once you register, oh, wait, I guess I do need to send you one email from it because there's a private webcast that we'll be holding just for people uh, that filled out the survey. Uh, so after that, I'll, I'll, I'll delete the, the email. So Yes. And by yes. submitting it, you're consenting to get the one email. And, yeah, yeah it, it's yeah. it's all in good fun. It's all in good fun. It's all in good fun. I mean, to have a private webcast, we'd have to right. collect their email. Uh, also, if you want to suggest guests, which is how someone reminded me that we should yeah. have Marcus on the show, you can go to securityweekly.com forward slash guests, complete the form, do that. A lot of great guest suggestions so far, including our guest for this evening, Marcus Carey. Uh, is a Navy cryptologist turned cybersecurity entrepreneur. He's, of course, the current founder and CEO at ThreatCare. He wrote a book called The Tribe of Hackers. And for that and so many more reasons, Marcus, we're excited to have you on the show this evening. Welcome. Thanks for having me, guys. It's good to see you. It's been some time, my friend. I'm glad you could, uh, could make the show this evening. Yeah. I'm really excited for you guys having me. I tried. I think y'all were at RSA. I tried to make my way over there, but I couldn't. It I was so you. packed and so busy. It was a big show floor on the on the the trade show floor. It was massive. So, yeah. um, let's see uh, where do we want to start, Marcus. So, um, I guess you've been on the show before, but you know, kind of tell everyone what uh, what you've been up to uh, recently. So, I guess the most recent thing and. and getting a lot of publicity is uh, we we put together a book a compilation book uh had a bunch of people help out with it uh including jeff jeff's in the book uh so we had uh over is, the last uh, year hey marcus is is, is bryson book. is bryson board in the book bryson's not in the book oh okay because he's standing behind jeff <laughs> right now <laughs> what's up bryson hey guys <laughs> how's it going hey, hey bryson how you doing Hey. hey, Marcus. Thanks for hosting uh, Jeff this evening and, uh, and, and making a, you know, a cameo appearance. Uh, I, you, I think the only thing I did was just bring him the, sky, the whiskey. That's, that's important. Perfect. That's a critical component of the show, so we that's thank you for that. I needed another pour, and you might as well come on and, and show your face. There you go. There you go. <laughs> awesome. Well, feel free to pop in uh, as often as you'd like, but I know you're, you're hosting a party, so party on. Have fun. Sorry. Marcus, continue, my friend. Marcus, it's all about Marcus. <laughs> oh, no problem. No problem. I, I love having really smart people. Also, Bryson's a vet. So I love I love having sharing the spotlight with other people that we have similar b backgrounds. It's a lot of us out here uh, that, that are doing really good work. So I love having people like that associated, even just being around people and the people that contributed to the book we had 69 contributors and that's what made the book so dope that's awesome so yeah how did you get the idea to write um to write this book yeah so uh i'm a big fan of a couple of people uh, a couple of people you know pretty well probably uh gary vaynerchuk is one of my entrepreneurial kind of people i look up to and uh also uh tim ferris is a guy that i've, I've read a lot of his books so he came out with a book called tribe of mentors and in that book, he talked to a lot of, uh, you know, entrepreneurs and celebrity types because that's his, that's his crowd. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to have it, I wanted to do something like that for the hacker crowd, because uh, you know people like you, Paul, and 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 people like us have a really good network of people that that we can call if I have any problem with anything. I could, I probably know somebody that knows how to do it. And so uh, what I wanted to do is I wanted to give exposure uh, to the masses of people that uh, that they wouldn't be able to talk to. And sometimes they're kind of intimidated trying to talk to some of these people at conferences. So that's the idea behind the book is to is to create a, you know, use a book to try to create kind of like a hallway con environment. And it worked really well. well that's awesome. Um, so what were uh, some of the people that are in the book and, and kind of like how is it structured and what uh, should people expect uh, in terms of, you know, all these interviews, like stitching them together? 
Yeah. So, um, so uh, in the in the book, it's uh, it's like I said, it's seventy people. I'm I'm one of the people in the book. So um, in the book, uh, we we ask. We ask all the people the same questions. It's 14 questions that each person was asked, and it is repetitive from a question standpoint. But what what happened was everybody had a different take mm. on the question, uh, and given and they all gave different kind of answers. There are definitely some themes that popped up in the book, mm-hmm. but it's just good hearing from some people are old school type people, some people are very successful entrepreneurs that are in the book. And uh, it was just it was just pretty cool hearing people. Some people are just like, you know, starting our journey, per se, compared to some of us. But it was really good hearing uh, how did they start in cybersecurity and and giving advice to people how they, that they can create a career out of this. And so it was such a diverse population. There was different kind of answers, different kind of specialties. And it made for a really good uh, compilation. Uh, and people love the book. Even people that are technical have been loving the book. Marcus, what what are some of the questions that you were asking uh, the folks in the book? So, uh, I mean, I started to, the first question I think I asked was, uh, "What's the biggest security myth?" Uh, and and you know, if they could debunk one myth, what would it be about security? Mm. And so, everybody has a different idea. It depends on what you work. So that that was pretty pretty good. Um, I asked people what what was the worst mistake they ever made. Because one of the things I want to do is even though some of these people will be considered rock stars by many, what I wanted to do is I wanted to humanize everybody. And so what I got them to do is I got them to uh, open up a bit. And how I did this is I actually answered all the questions first. And then all the people that participated in the book got a chance to see my answers first. And uh, if anybody knows me, you, you guys know me forever. I'm pretty transparent. And I'm also pretty dang vocal about stuff. And I talk about a lot of uncomfortable stuff. So uh, luckily, you know, a lot of people took the, the cues that I laid out in the beginning of the book. And uh, they they were pretty open, most of them were. Uh, and some people, funny enough, some people didn't take it as serious. And they people mm-hmm. hit me back and said, man, I wish I would have knew this book was going to blow up like this. I could have answered questions different. Mm-hmm. But um, it was it was just interesting how it all came together. So, Marcus, what what was your biggest security myth that you'd like to debunk? My biggest uh, security myth is, uh, I think this is what I put in the book, because I, I would have to go back and, and verify. There's so many myths, though, right? So the myth that I wanted to debunk um, was that everybody everybody acts like that security, they're... The, the myth is that people say that there's all these different um, attacks all the time. You got to stay ahead of these attacks. But if you actually look at it, it's been the same attacks over the last 20 to 30 years that are still prevalent today. And um, the problem is that we just haven't fixed it and we keep on running, creating new problems and, and new classes of problems. Uh, but essentially, if you broke, broke everything down to me, that it's been the same old problems over and over again. We have different names. We we market it different. We, but it's all still the same things over and over again. I mean, SQL injections, et cetera, et cetera, and also the way hackers, you know, exploit these things as far as dumping hashes, passing the hashes. All these different things still occur over and over again, and you know, we've been talking about this stuff, and and I I've been a, f- a fan and follow of your show for a while. We've been talking about the same stuff for like ten years or whatever. No, it's true. There's definitely some themes that don't don't go away. Certainly, SQL injection being being one of them uh, for sure. Marcus, what what were some of your favorite like question and answer kind of pairings to give people a little sampling of? You know, you had fourteen questions, and you know who answered one of those questions that just like shocked you the most? Well, I mean. Dang, there's there's so so much stuff in there. Um, but basically, uh, I think Doug Song, he actually he's he's he stood out in the book. Uh, Doug, he uh, he talks about, and if if you met Doug, and many people have met him, 
he's the, he's like probably the most hum, humblest guy I've ever met, and he's accomplished a lot in his life. But he was talking about he just he just dropped some gems, uh, and he said that you know the kind of like the key to life is uh, the meaning of life is live a meaningful life. It's one of the gems he dropped. Um, he said his, his father was a Buddhist monk and and also owned a liquor store or something like that. Mm. So it's like these paradoxes uh, in life. Um, but a lot of people drop gems like that. And what's what's cool about the book is that I have people in there that are would be considered competitors. There's there's people in there that have rival firms. There's people in there that that you know hate each other. They don't like each other. But I, I just happen to be connected to them. So the cool thing about it is that when it comes to the values of helping people out, the, secu- the security community is awesome. I mean, just looking at the back of your laptop there, Paul, I see a lot of charitable type stuff on even on your laptop. So we're that's just how we how we do. We're we're a very giving community, uh, even though and it's, it was awesome that we could put the difference differences aside and come together and do this book because and and the book is like you know i would say 99.9 percent positive and that's that's awesome and that's kind of like what we need in our space agreed now marcus we we've done this podcast for some time and we've you know had our share of guests come on the show uh we personally every one of us knows how much work it is to get in touch with someone and figure out the logistics to to get them on the show so for those out there that maybe have their own podcast or they just want to reach out to someone and ask them a question or, or whatever, and these are you know people they look up to, certainly the people we have on the show are people we look up to, well, what are some tips and tricks you have for uh, getting someone like a Doug Song and, and other people who are, I mean, they're hard to get a hold of and it's a process. What, what was your, your process and tips? I think in, in life in general, I think the more value that you give the people, the, the more likely you are to be able to connect with people. So don't, don't have it being a a one-sided proposition. You know, you know, I always go in bringing value. Um, And since I started a company, this is something that I, I I realized that it's super valuable is, is always providing value to anybody. It could be another entrepreneur. It could be to some, anybody. If you're always providing value, then, then people know that you're the kind of person that they want to spend their time right uh, with. Sure, Jeff. Um, sorry, Jeff has a question, Marcus. Well, I want to rephrase your question um, in a in a little bit, and and this is the question I've been wanting to ask Marcus, you know, ever since this project started. You know, the the first question I guess would be why me, but the larger question is, you know, you you, you pick seventy people that you say in the book are you know leaders in the field, luminaries, rock stars. I looked at the book, and and I'm probably not a good, a, a good representative sample, but there's a lot of people in the book that I've never heard of. Um, so I guess my question is, you know, given that you probably could have picked 500 rock stars in, in our industry that could have contributed to the book, Bryson being one of them, um, yeah, how did how did you how did you pick the 70? What was your criteria for? you know, selecting the, the people that you did select. Yeah, so one of the things I learned a long time ago in my life is that uh, everybody is an expert on at something. And even though people kind of shoot down that expert title, there's always somebody that knows something more than than you do. And there's always, there's always people that we can identify with better than other people. Like I'm an ex-Navy guy, so there's going to be tons of military people they relate to me. Um, there is, and and so what I wanted to do is I wanted to have the book be a reflection of the different identities that uh, are that exist inside of the cyber cybersecurity community. Uh, it's it's certainly easy to go and get the usual sus- suspects uh, to do these kind of things at conferences and things of that nature, but uh, it was really important that I wanted to bring together a collaboration of people. That all all the people, uh, whether it was age, whether it was sex, race, uh, whatever it may be, uh, I wanted to have a really good representation of all the awesome people in that industry, and um, I think overall uh, we we did that. 
and uh, it's not just about, you know, do you have a big name in the industry? It's about, uh, you know, you bring something to the table that somebody's going to learn from. And that conclude that includes people at an early stage. Uh, one of the things that I admire about uh, your show, Paul, is that over time, uh, you actually have a good eye for talent. And you've had a lot of people that were just coming up in the game. Uh, and now they're, they're rock stars, quote unquote. But you've always had a really good knack of, of uh, bringing interesting people onto your show. Uh, and that's one of the things that, uh, you know, there's this saying that real recognize real. And so, you know, people that, that are real people and, and uh, we recognize the people that are quite talented and, and we want to give them a, a voice. And I think that's what your show has done over the years. And so uh, definitely I wanted to give people a voice that you never heard of before. Yeah, and, and Marcus, what I love about a couple of things that, that you've said uh, just now is, you know, one, when you reach out to people, make it about them, right? It, it, and that's something I learned much later than I wish I had, uh, that that's how you get people to respond, um, is make it about them, not about you, right? And that's a that's a sales tactic, that's a how you get guests on the show tactic, and something that we, you know, take to heart here at Security Weekly, and many do. I mean, it, the what the book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, talked about it however many, you know, 40 plus years ago. Um, yep. And the other thing that uh, also we share in common, Marcus, is if you set your goal to help people, right? Like you wrote this book to, to help people, to have people share their stories in hopes that it helps the community. I mean, that's what we do here, you know, every week. So um, that's really awesome. Our goals are aligned. Uh, I can't wait to, I haven't read the book yet. I can't wait to read it. You're building my anticipation right. even more. <laughs> yeah, and Paul, Paul actually, uh, it's funny that Paul, Paul, you drop a lot of books. You actually, recently we had a conversation a, a while ago. And you actually dropped two gems on me. Um, it was some like, brain tricks or something. What was yeah, that brain, uh, The Brain on it by Sean D'Souza. Yep. That um, book is awesome. Thanks for recommending that book. Hopefully, to me. you got a lot more, uh, lot more sales after reading that book. That was why I recommended you good. recommend that book. Good. Yeah. yeah, good. And then the second book you recommended uh, was Never Split the Difference. Yes. And uh, yeah, thanks a lot for uh, dropping those gems on me. Right, that's one um, you don't want your potential clients to read because <laughs> it's about <laughs> negotiation. <laughs> uh, but you, you know, obviously, you had, uh, us having that, everyone having that knowledge is is a good thing. I think it improves negotiations tremendously on both sides. And that's what's funny about it. And and this is a really good example of this. Uh, we've known each other for a long time. We exchanged books. And so one of the questions we had in the book was what book recommendations. Yeah. And people dropped some gems uh, in, th in that, that piece too. And so I just wanted to create a hallway con in a book. That's, that's really great. That's really great. Now, did any of the interviewees interact with each other or was it just you interviewing Excuse me, each one of them. Yeah, it was totally blind. And mm -hmm. I want to give a shout out to Jennifer Jen. Jennifer Jen is our head of marketing at ThreatCare. We actually put this book out on, on ThreatCare Press. We couldn't get any anybody to pick up the book. I, I pitched this book, but I was like, this book needs to come out. So we, we actually put it out as a company. And so uh, my head of marketing, Jennifer Jen, she, she actually compiled and managed this project big That's time awesome. so without jennifer jen this project wouldn't happen so shout out to jen jen um and so i, I hopefully i didn't forget your question what was it again i think i <laughs> forgot my my question there was a so. question <laughs> there was a question <laughs> oh, yeah. so the guests didn't interact with each other well but then my next oh, yeah, question was did. yeah so oh, did, did was not. it um, didn't know it. was it written or oral or video or like how did you interview the the folks yeah, I would say probably 80 something percent, a high number of people responded. A couple of people uh, responded and, and like they wrote, they, they, they wrote down all this stuff. It was stuff. like email correspondence or whatever, right? Yep. And uh, and so there, there were several iterations of editing. We mm -hmm. interviewed a couple of people and transcribed it, but most of the people responded back uh, with, with text. Uh, we we actually we we hired an editor. We had a professional editor to edit mm -hmm. the book. We also we also had a, a book designer design the book, and and it came out pretty it came out looking pretty well. Nice, Jeff. I mean, you know, I'm in the book, so I I, I can sort of answer the question to some degree. I mean, you know, Marcus reached out to me by email. 
and said, hey, I'm thinking about putting together a book. Uh, I'd like you to be a part of it. And basically, here's a survey, here's a questionnaire, 14 questions, you know, fill out your responses. And I filled it out. And, and I guess a, a little bit to my surprise, um, you know, I, I, don't know, I don't even know if I have a copy of what I originally you know, submitted in terms of my responses. But you know, from what I can tell, pretty much what I wrote translated into what is in the book. Um, uh, you know, so, you know, for me, it was an experience of here's a, here's a survey, here's 14 questions. I filled them out and, and, you know, the, you know, to, to Marcus's credit, you know, and Jennifer's, it had to be a huge effort. Cause I, I think I filled out the, the questionnaire probably almost a year before the book was actually published. So, you know, there, you know, the, the work that was involved in pulling it all together, uh, you know, I commend everybody that was involved in it, but I was a little bit surprised that, that, you know, from what I could tell, all of my responses kind of made it through to the finished product. I didn't really know when I filled out the survey what the end product was going to be. I, yeah. I, I think I sort of had in mind that, okay, they'll probably take the highlights or the snippets. It's kind of right. like when you you're thinking more like a media person, Jeff, right? Which usually they yeah. turn what you written into something completely different. Right. Or, you know, if you're, if you're getting interviewed, you know, by a video and you talk for mm -hmm. 20 minutes, you end up using a 30, 30 right. second snippet of what you said. And it's usually out of context. All yep, that kind yep. of thing. So, uh, you know, so. So you know, I, the beauty of this, Marcus, though, is you are truly a brilliant hacker because you published a book, but you had other people write it for you and i'm not saying that I, and, and that's not a knock in any in any sense right but i think that's really awesome right like i want to write this book but everyone else is contributing the content to it now obviously it was a lot of work to put it together and obviously the community uh benefits but i i think that's pretty cool yeah so a part of that is if you look at any book uh so i could actually broke this book down into 14 chapters and i could have just yeah took yeah people's comments and quoted them and all that stuff so it could have been that kind of book uh, but I, I a part of me this is kind of morbid like i want to share everything uh i want to i like authenticity and and i like all that stuff i want to share everything i know and i want to help my friends share everything they know mm. before i go away so i i think that what i want to do is i want to produce a bunch of evergreen content <laughs> and help people produce a bunch of evergreen content. And then if they ever want to know like what was computer security people thinking of back in, you know, 2000, you know, 18, 19, 20. Right. Um, and because like, you don't really have that, you don't I mean, cause a lot of stuff started in the DOD and you hear these, you know, stories and some of those stories are apocryphal stories about how this stuff all started. And so it's, it's great to, to hear hear it from the horse's mouth so uh you know it's kind of unfiltered. like your it's your collective last lecture it sounds like when you were just describing it yeah and another thing that's cool about this is it's already been used in colleges to teach people mm. uh, I, I've, I've actually talked I, I i skyped into some courses and stuff already and people are using uh some of the content already in in interesting ways that's awesome that's awesome go ahead jeff yeah. One one question I have, uh, you know, and I'm I'm working my way through the book, you know, because, you know, I, I'm busy, I'm lazy, whatever you want to say. But it's my a goal lot. is, a lot of, is a lot. <laughs> there is a lot there, and you know, reading everybody's response to the same questions at some level was tedious. But for the for the several chapters that I've read so far, um, I, I have, and I've gravitated to more of the sort of the older uh you know old salts you know curmudgeon types like me trying to you know seeing well, what do they say about the same questions that i answered and and this is not empirical in any way but i i have noticed that you know for the people that have been around a while their responses to some of the questions like the biggest myth and you know what would you change that type of thing the, there seems to be a theme that that is sort of consistent across some of the responses to some of the questions and i'm curious as to whether you you know obviously you've read all the material but 
I'm curious as to whether there's any has been any attempt to sort of compile sort of a uh, a list of the you know the top answers, the themes that emerged from answering the various questions because I think that there's some themes emerging. You know, you you'd said earlier that there's a lot of you know people come at it from different perspectives and there's a lot of diversity in the answers, but I think there's also a lot of themes. And I'm wondering if you've if 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 you've had any chance to sort of compile that, and if there's a way to share that in any way, so I don't have to do the work because I'm kind of fundamentally lazy. <laughs> well, there's there's definitely already some blog posts out there that does a bunch yep. of compilations. Uh, I mean, so we ask what books do you recommend, what movies did you recommend. I've seen a couple of blog posts on that stuff. Um, I would say that. The, the main theme uh, is an inspirational theme uh, overall. And it's telling people that, you know, with hard work and determination and and being a good person, uh, people can achieve their goals. And so that's kind of like, that's kind of like the theme of Marcus's story, my, my own story. Uh, I hate to speak to, about myself in third person, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, if, if people can, people can do this and, People can can be security people. So, Marcus, do you tie uh, in the book? Uh, do you tie all some of the th main themes together to give kind of your take on uh, all of the fourteen questions across all the other sixty nine people? At the end of the book, there is a short tie up uh, mm -hmm. where I, I I try to we we comment on on all the themes, uh, but. I really like the what I really like about the book is what some Jeff was talking about and the original book that I like said that inspired this is Tribe of Mentors. So when I saw that book, I knew names in the book and I want to automatically turn to those names. Right. And so so I knew right away that that's what because I did it myself in that that version. So I was like, man, this is going to be dope because if I want to, you know, see what Jeff is talking about, uh and you know what's crazy about this book, man? It's like, like I was at I was at the National Security Agency, right? And there's like, on accident, it wasn't on purpose. There's like, several people in the book that have similar stories to me, uh, like that that whole they work for the you know IC and all that. So it was just awesome going through and 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 reading those people that had a lot of stuff in common with me. Um, I'm 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 definitely younger. Uh, a little bit younger than Jeff, but uh, <laughs> but Jeff and people like Ron Gula and and those people they were at Fort Meade before I was at Fort Meade, and all I would hear is people talking about those guys. They those guys were like superheroes hmm. uh, at Fort Meade, <laughs> and so and to have personal relationships, I'm really cool with Jeff. Ron Gula is, is awesome. He's an investor of mine, um, uh, so. It's just awesome to see some of my kind of like heroes, quote unquote, uh, and see what they've done with their careers and and all that stuff, and and to me be able to to share their stories, and also share stories of people that are coming up behind us. Um, I feel like I'm kind of like in the middle. I'm I'm not quite old school, but I'm old school enough to relate to the old school people, and uh, and I'm not a millennial, so I'm I'm right in the middle. Marcus, who did you say you interviewed some of the, like up and comers in the in the book as well? Um, and kind of a secondary question, like what are some of the names in there that we people you interviewed that we may not recognize? Yeah, so I actually they have people too. So one of the people, and it's kind of a crazy story. Um, when I was in Maryland, I did some public access stuff because I've always, you know, been a creative and produced content. So they had a public access studio. And at the studio, when I was going in it, funny enough, I interviewed Ron Gula way back in Maryland for that show. <clears throat> so uh, I was doing some public access shows. So uh, it was about security and all that stuff, too. Uh, but I always was messing around being creative. And so this 17-year-old kid had a had a CCNA book on a desk. Uh, and one, one of the things I did at Fort Meade is I, I, I was a network engineer on a global engineering team while I helped build networks for NSA. Uh, and so, and I, so I was a CCNP at the time. I was, a, I was a Cisco beast. 
And uh, I was like, hey, what's that book? And so that kid was 17 years old. Uh, and I've mentored that kid for since then, it's been 11 or 12 years, something like that. So he's in a book, his name is Ronald Eddings. Uh, so, but, but I've seen that kid grow and he just, he was working for Domesto. They, so they exited to Palo Alto networks. Uh, he's a machine learning AI beast. And I, I've been knowing that kid and I, I, I kind of like put him in security and so it's awesome to see people like that. And I know that, that uh, you know, Jeff, he has stories like this too. And, you know, people that I, that I worked with at Fort Meade and mentored, and I managed the intern program for CSC. Um, funny enough, one of my intern's wife is in the book, Shinari Schwartz. Uh, I met her because I taught at John Hopkins in Baltimore, and she was a student. Now she's like a CISO type level. And so those those personal connections, seeing people, because I you know, I know that you all you you see the people that you mentor, but when you see people actually follow up and follow through and do awesome things, it's a really a blessing. It really makes me feel good. And even if some, sometimes if, if if stuff doesn't work out, you look at those handful of people that you really made an impact on our lives, and it makes you feel great. It's awesome. More questions for Marcus. Larry, I, I, I do. Lee. But Lee, go ahead. I, I have sort of one closing um, closing question. So, I had I was thinking about all the work you did, Marcus, to pull us together and spending a year assembling all the interviews, and it, it it led me down kind of two questions. One was kind of the mundane of what what kept you going, and the other one is after all this, is there another book in you? Oh. And and uh, yes. I will. I, that was Marcus, Larry's Marcus, question. Yeah, too. Marcus. Before you before you answer that, I want to you know, dovetail the Lee's question. Um, so, is there going to be a sequel for those that may be only a slightly little bit butthurt that we didn't make it to the first one? <laughs> 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 you do a second yeah, one. I mean, ask yeah. me. Ask me how I know this. <laughs> it's funny. Um, you know, I said earlier, and I'll say it again. You know, I, I could probably think of seventy people that could have been in the book a ahead of me. Uh, one one thing, real quickly, Marcus. While I'm talking, if you could grab the the copy of the book that's behind you, so we could actually show it to people in case people haven't seen it yet. But one of the things that impressed me, uh, probably the biggest thing that impressed me about the book is the fact that I didn't know so many of the people that are in yeah. the book, but mm -hmm. they were recognized as luminaries. And what it what it underscores to me, and something that I've noticed, because I, you know, I've only in the last couple of years been kind of back in the hacker community. I spent a lot of my career just being a consultant, being billable sort of being on the, the compliance uh, side of things. I'm not going to say the three letters, cause not that I don't want to drink. But <laughs> something that I've noticed and, and something that I think is a problem in our industry that I, I, I'm trying to figure out a way to, to, to overcome is the fact that there's a lot of people that call themselves cybersecurity or information security professionals, but they're not all hackers. They're not. They're not all going to DefCon. They're not all, you know, breaking into things, doing pen testing. They do other things. They 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 fulfill other roles. They they have other objectives. But we're all part of this tribe to use the, to use the title of the book, and and they all have something to contribute. You know, we don't all have to be hackers. We don't all have to be people that are able to break into things. Um, there, you know, there, there, there's more to the, this thing than just that one s silo, if you will. And that's probably what has impressed me most about the book is that you were able to pull in people that I've never heard of, the hacker community has never heard of, and yet they're making a contribution and they're doing something within their field. And, and if, 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 if nothing else, I think this book is an opportunity for people to get a copy read it and realize there's more going on than just our little, you know, our, our little silo, our little corner of the world. And um, th that to me is what's most impressive about the book is, is, is that you did, you were able to draw from sort of different silos and, and people that 
you know, you know, old timers, people that are relatively new. The diversity to me is not so much in terms of sexes or races, but in terms of you've got people in the book that have only been in the business for a couple years, you know, two or three or four years. Whereas, you know, I don't know if I I hold the record at 37 years. There's probably people in the book that have been there longer than me. But to uh, me, the Jim diversity Christie, is... You run, run for your money. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> and, and I'm okay with that. But uh, to me, the, the, what's cool about the book is the diversity across the, the different silos, the different aspects of security, in this thing that we call cybersecurity, whatever that means. But show us the book, Marcus, please. I hope you grabbed it by now. Yeah, so here, here's the here's the here's the book. Here's Jeff in the book. Oh <laughs> God, man! Look at the camera. camera. I'm gonna break the camera. Imagine that. Huh. But, uh, Go another yeah, page. So no. The the questions uh, that that Lee asked. So there definitely is going to be uh, there's going to be more books, um, and uh, there's going to be plenty of opportunities for everybody to contribute. Um, I look at this as a collective thing. So funny enough, uh, my, my career began in telecommunications, cryptography, signals intelligence, uh, all those different things. And I never considered myself a hacker. Never, ever, ever. And uh, and then I met a guy named Johnny Long, who a lot of y'all know. So Johnny told me, Marcus, you're a hacker. And uh, I was like, okay, cool. I, I can, I'll think about taking that, that label. And, and, and the reason why I, I think it's important to, to, and I'm very liberal with, with, with this, you know, and some people, some people hate it is because there's people that are, are, you know, I'm, I'm going to say it, they're frauds and they, they out there talking about their hackers. And so, if you're if you're a good person and you're trying to break down barriers and trying to defend stuff and help people out, you know, there's many ways that you can be a hacker in life. You don't really have to fit some kind of profile. So I just I just I use it. I use the term very liberally. And uh, of course, I know how to code. I know how to exploit systems. I know how to do all this stuff myself. But uh, you don't have to be. You don't have to have have to know any of that stuff to to be a hacker. So funny enough, there's going to be people that, dis that disagree with that. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to bring people together. Uh, and the big thing about the tribe is bringing that tribal knowledge together. And so there's tribal knowledge uh, to answer Lee's question, tribal knowledge. There's all this tribal knowledge that we have. And so uh, there's going to be at least three more of these books. This right here is the introduction. So we're putting together a leadership version, tribe of hackers, leadership edition, we're going to be putting together a tribe of hackers red team book, and we're going to put together a tribe of hackers blue team book. So um, those are going to be the next uh, three books. Uh, these books were, uh, this book was self-published. Funny enough, nobody would publish the book, but now we have people interested in publishing yeah. uh, more books. That's how, yeah, that's how it works today. Um, what was it like self-publishing? Was that do you have advice for those that maybe? have ideas for a book and are concerned a publisher might not pick it up and therefore wondering about self-publishing? Yeah, self-publishing was great. There's a couple of people in our space. You can be very successful with self-publishing is what I found out mm. because once we, we, we self-published this and we, a couple other people uh, that, that I know and met through this process have self-published. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's something you should do if you have an idea it's easier than ever. Um, you don't have to get a fancy editor and all that stuff or, or, you know, somebody to design your book, but I would recommend that you do it because the, the credibility that you have as a published author will open up more opportunities for you. Mm. And um, even though, like you said, I kind of hacked, we kind of hacked this together and, and had a lot of people contribute to a nice book. But the truth is that it's about the knowledge contained in the book. Now, that's, I didn't say it. you hacked it together. I said you hacked people into writing a book, <laughs> which I commend you for because I think that's awesome. I appreciate that, brother. <laughs> it, it's, I guess the same thing that I do when I bring guests on the show. Like I, I just sit here and ask questions. All the content, like good content is coming from you. So <laughs> That's right. So, 
Marcus, right. have, have you published a, a list of all of the people in the book, or do you want some of that to be like a surprise? Well, so you can actually go to, we've actually published that. Okay. You can, on Twitter, uh, you can follow at Tribe of Hackers. That's a Twitter handle. And there's a list on that. There's a list of all the people. You can follow all the, the Tribe of Hacker contributors. Uh, and what I try to tell people is the Tribe of Hackers is everybody in the community. It's not just the people that contribute it. Um, also, there's one of the cool things we haven't mentioned is that you can go and you can see that all the proceeds from this book go to charity. And that's another way, that's another reason why people got behind it and they contributed. And so, uh, so far the book, we, we've sold uh, over 3,200 copies of this book, uh, 3,200 copies. That's a, that's a lot of book for a self-publish. Uh, it, it sounds like we're doing well. Amazon is going to feature us on some kind of publication or something because that's a lot of books. That's um, awesome. So, yeah, so there, yeah, follow, follow, follow at Tribal Hackers. And you'll, find, you'll follow all the people, and you can actually follow the charities that we're, we're giving money to. That's awesome. Uh, so it, it, there's a list of charities that you're giving money to. Yep, yep. It's on the. It's right on the. It's on the back of the book. And so uh, the 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 ones on on the back of the book are Bunker Labs. They help military veterans do entrepreneurship stuff. They've helped me. Sickle Cell Disease Association, uh, Rainforest Project, and Startups Kids Clubs. So th those are those are some. And we're also we donated money to the the Royal Tech Fund. Uh, we're going to be uh, donate money to the uh, Mental Health Hackers uh, and several different charities. Uh, so so far we've we've uh, we've we've raised over ten thousand dollars for charity, and so that money is going to be spread uh, through charities uh, and make an impact. So That's we're awesome. happy about that. Marcus, uh, more questions for Marcus before I... I'm good. Okay. That, that, that's awesome that all the proceeds are going to charity. That's fantastic. Great contribution, Marcus. Uh, so, Marcus, we'll tell everyone where to get the book at the end. I mean, you can find it on Amazon or tribehackers.com, right, to, to make it short and simple. But um, I have five questions for you. And they're, hopefully none of these are on the, the, the 14 <laughs> list, especially <laughs> question four, which is just kind of silly. But we have silly... Security Weekly, five questions. Are you ready to play five questions with Security Weekly, Marcus? I'm ready. Three words to describe yourself. Thank country. Thank Texan. Uh, and love. <laughs> if you were a serial killer, what would be your weapon of choice? <laughs> Golly, that's kind of morbid question. Let me think real quick. It's a hypothetical, Marcus. A hypothetical. Oh, love that, right? You're gonna love you, love us I, to death. Hypothetical. I would, I would be a serial killer that made everything seem like an accident. So I would, I would plot and probably throw people off bridges or something like that, and make everything look like an accident. Marcus, if <laughs> if you were to book about yourself, what would the title be? Uh, hacking life. In the popular game of Ask Grabby Grabby, do you prefer to go first or second? I was in the Navy, and that was a very popular game in the Navy. <laughs> <laughs> and I always prefer to go second. Alrighty. Marcus, <laughs> choose two celebrities to be your parents. Alive, dead, fictional, or otherwise? Uh, this is the tricky one. <clears throat> Because clearly the ask, grab, grab you one wasn't tricky for Marcus. <laughs> well, I mean, it's multiple choice. No, There's only really. two possible yeah, answers. Yeah. No, you, and he man, was in the you Navy. You would not so. know what's going on on the ship, man. I was on the ship, bro. It was crazy. <laughs> you could have been on a submarine, and that is you know, easy, even easier. <laughs> There's no difference. There's no difference between a submarine and a ship, man. You never see the light anyway. Yeah, once you're on the inside, yeah, that's uh, it. That's you, know, what she said. you know why they <laughs> use powdered soap in the Navy? It takes longer to pick up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you haven't heard that joke. I'm surprised. That, that is a joke that, that you would tell, Larry. That is. That is a joke. Now it's in Larry's repertoire. Yep, of it's done. We're just stalling, Marcus, so you can tell us who <laughs> two celebrities are that hey, would be your parents. Come on. So, uh, two celebrities that would be my parents. I like uh, Samuel Jackson. Yeah, because he he was crazy revolutionary back in in the day, and uh, Tony Stark's Iron Man. Hell yeah! There you go. Yeah, okay. That's actually my answer to that question, Marcus. So we share that in common as well. <laughs> That's awesome. It's a great answer. Marcus Carey, thank you so much for appearing on the show. The book is Tribe of Hackers. You can go to tribeofhackers.com. Follow him on Twitter at Tribe of Hackers. Uh, and the book is on Amazon. So thank you very much, Marcus. Hey, thanks a lot. Appreciate y'all. Thanks for voting me on. Thanks for voting me on the show, everyone. Awesome. Yes, Marcus was our, our first guest uh, requested on the show. Awesome. So thank you, listeners. Thanks, Marcus. We'll be right back. Stay tuned.